This is Matt with Cheap ABS and today I'm going to show you how to remove a Bosch 5.7 ABS module from a Passat with a W8 engine. These are a little bit different than the uh, B5 Passats that I have in the other video with a 5.3 so I'm going to show you those steps to remove this module. The first thing you want to do is open the hood and remove this screw right here to lift this plastic panel up to be able to access the module. So that panel's been removed now and to find the module you can see the hard brake lines going into the ABS pump right here and there's the pressure sensor on the pump and the module simply screwed into the other side. You can't really see it because this coolant reservoir tanks in the way. So we need to remove this coolant reservoir. It's held on with three screws here, here, and here. So go ahead and remove all three of those and give us some better access. So now we've removed all three of those screws and we're lifting the tank up to expose the module and you can see that the um, sensor that tells the computer how full the tank is is connected and kind of preventing us from really moving this out of the way. So go ahead and disconnect this sensor right here um, so that we can pull the tank over the side. Now we still can't move this all the way out of the way because of this coolant return line which is uh, doesn't have much room to move in it. So I think the best thing to do here is to go ahead and take this off. So grab some hose clamp pliers if you've got them and use this to pull this guy off or if you don't try to just use some regular pliers they kind of aren't that fun to uh, remove with regular pliers but uh, it certainly can be done so go ahead and take this off and make sure you elevate it above the uh, the level of the um, heater core inlet over here otherwise you might have uh, some coolant shooting out and same thing with this uh, tank don't let it fall um, fall below the level of uh, the other coolant lines in the system otherwise coolant will leak and you might want to take some rags or something and stuff uh, stuff up the uh, plug so nothing comes out so just an FYI you can see the coolant here um, if the car has been driven recently like this one was the coolant will be hot so it'll be a little bit under pressure so even if these things are elevated when you remove it there'll be some spray so it's always a good idea to have gloves on and it um, I would recommend waiting until maybe it's a little bit cooler if, uh, if you're concerned otherwise uh, just be prepared for a little quick burst of coolant to come out um, and have gloves and eye protection and so here we are with the coolant tank out of the way and finally we're got the module and we're ready to start taking the screws out so up at top we can see the first of the six screws that hold it on there are two t20 torque screws go ahead and remove both okay of these. so we've removed the first screw the second screw and i went ahead and took the uh, electrical harness connector off and pushed that over to the side and um, now there's two more screws that you can't see on each side so four total two down here and two down here these are a little more tricky to get to um, i don't think I'm going to be able to demonstrate them with the camera but um, you've got pretty straight access back here so you should be able to get a ratchet and the appropriately sized T20 socket straight on them so go ahead and find the right tool that you need to get to these screws and remove uh, remove both of them on both sides and the module should come right off. So I just took out the first of these four hidden screws over here and I'll show you a couple other hints. This metal thing back here is flimsy. Push it back up against the engine, give yourself some more room to work. Also, it'll be helpful to have a light so that you can actually see the, uh, the top of the screw so you can make sure your bit's engaging on it. Otherwise, you'll be fumbling in the dark and it'll take a little longer to find. And what I'm using to remove this is uh, set up like this, just a quarter inch socket with a swivel extension and a, um, a T20 uh, quarter inch uh, bit. Uh, I think I bought this at Harbor Freight. You can buy all these things at Harbor Freight for probably under 10 bucks. Um, 
it might even be better to, if you have a, if you have a little stubby extension instead of the swivel. Uh, the swivel gives you some more access so you can actually turn it without being straight on. But really, I think that the if you move this thing back out of the way, just a little stubby extension is probably all you need. This thing itself isn't quite long enough, so that's the reason we need the extension. Find something else that works for you, whatever you need to get them out, and go ahead and remove We're moving the three. second to last screw now, and you can see for this one. I'm removing the second to last screw now and you can see for this one I don't even need the uh, swivel extension um, on the wrench to access it. it, it, it uh, you can angle it just right and it's, uh, it directly comes out. Okay so I just removed the sixth and final screw and now the module is loose and ready to come off. When you're taking it off one important thing that nobody else is going to tell you is that if you encounter resistance when taking it off, I mean look how smoothly this thing glides. This module's probably never been off this car before. If you encounter resistance and you're having to tug really hard on it, um, what's probably happening is one of these metal solenoid valves, or one of these metal solenoids is sticking to the valve. And that's how these modules get broken a lot to the point where they can almost be unrepairable is because somebody tries to force the module off when one of these solenoid um, rings is stuck to the valve maybe because it's been off of the unit off of the pump before water's gotten in and it's rusted to there if it's if you see any of them are stuck or if you're feeling resistance you're gonna have to get a flathead screwdriver or something and gently pry it off because these things are held on there very loosely. These are what I'm talking about. These these only have two connections, and it may look like it's okay if one of them breaks. It maybe feel a little bit loose, but it'll still be connected. It won't work. They they, they I'm, let me see if I can get a good picture of one. Um, you can see right in there. There are those two two gold leads and those both connect to the solenoid valve and they both have to be in intact. That's the reason this thing's loose. If one of them's broken it's, it becomes really loose. So what I'm trying to say is make sure that none of these valves are excessively loose or even worse if one of them is disconnected. The way to prevent that from happening is to be very careful when you take it off of the pump. And when you ship the module to me, take a piece of packing tape and just gently press it over these valves to hold it in place. I'll ship it back with a piece of packing tape over it too. When you remove that tape, remove it very carefully. Don't yank it off because you might take the valve with it. <clears throat> so here's the here's the ABS module for this particular car. Uh, the WH used the uh, this particular part number, the 090 unit. This is all you need to send me. Just box it up and uh, go on the website listed below, cheapabs.com and uh, fill out the order form and I will send you uh, an email with all the instructions that you'll you'll need to send this to me. I'll, f I'll fix it within a day or two of receiving it and you should have it back within uh, five to seven days. And it should be a plug and play um, operation. Uh, just reinstall it the same as you removed it and if you have any other questions or need additional help just go on my website and fill out the uh, the contact form and I'll get so, in touch with you. Another Thanks thing I recommend is having a magnet handy. If you uh, if you don't have one of these you're probably going to lose two or three of these screws. So what I recommend doing is when the screw is uh, loosened and it's about ready to be pulled out, you've taken it all the way out of the threads and it's ready, you're ready, ready to pull it out with your fingers, don't try to pull it out with your fingers. You're going to drop it and lose it. Just stick the magnet down in there and let, let it pick the screw up for you. That's a lot easier than having to try to find these screws after they go down the engine bay. And uh, when you're removing the very bottom ones, it's, it's a little better to work from this side rather than trying to work from above and trying to reach over because you'll have a you'll have a better view of what's going on from behind it over here and you'll, you'll probably notice that if uh, you've worked on any of the earlier cars 
this unit's totally reversed and the other cars it's the opposite way that's the reason we have you remove the wheel so that you can access the screws to the wheel liner this one's kind of weird because it's uh, the screws are pointing towards the uh, the engine but uh, still definitely definitely accessible